Hello, welcome back to Losing the Boomer Blues, part 22. I was away in Placerville, but now I returned, and we're going to begin with chapter 14. Lucy Finds Fred's Shades Lucy rushed over to Mary's home early on Thursday morning, two days before the reunion. She anxiously knocked on her door. When Mary answered the door, Lucy pulled an eyeglass case out of her pocket and said, Look what I found. Fred's old shades were in the attic. She took them out of her case, put them on, and said, Old school, right? Maybe now I can revisit the past, too. Mary shrieked. Far out. What a trip. Fred found his French suede jacket hanging in the closet at the gas station. It's been hanging in that closet for years, so he's dressing hip for the reunion, too. Bob and Jane connected with Phil, the drummer, and it looks like the band will be reuniting for our reunion. I can't wait to see Jane in that go-go dress that she found at Held Over. Groovy, Lucy, let's go to yesteryears. We can check on Traveler and at the same time show Jane your shades. She'll freak out when she sees both of us wearing vintage sunglasses. Great idea. Mary took her sunglasses out of her purse put them on and said, let's go. When they arrived at yesteryears, they saw Traveler on the bench in the front of the shop taking a siesta. Grace was at her desk in the back reading the newspaper, and Jane was dusting the knickknacks in the front of the shop. Anybody home? Mary asked as she and Lucy walked in. Peering out from behind the curtain, Jane waved her feather duster in the air and said, wow, Lucy, you're tripping back in time too. You're both gearing up for the reunion, aren't you? Yep, replied Lucy. I found Fred's sunglasses in the attic last night. Aren't they cool? Yeah, cool. I'm going to look for a pair, too. I don't think Bob has his old ones any longer. Mary asked sarcastically, what? Did we hear you correctly? You want a pair of outdated shades like ours? Yeah, who would have thought? Mary responded, not me. That's for sure, but I have to admit, I'm happy you had a change of heart. Grace came out of her office and joined the group. She handed Jane an eyeglass case. She opened it, and inside was a pair of blue-tinted round shades. Grace said, they're John Lennon's sunglasses. They aren't vintage, but they're retro-inspired. Funky shades, Grace. Thank you. I'll wear them to the reunion, but not all around the town like Mary and Lucy. She smiled and put the sunglasses on. I'll wear them when I jam with the band tomorrow night. It'll blow Bob away. Where did you get them? They belong to a close friend of mine. He gave them to me a long time ago. I particularly like the carved wooden box they came in. I never took them out of the box until now. I knew they would be well received one day by someone special like you. I always wondered what was in that box. Thank you, Grace. I'll for sure wear them when I perform. Walking up to Traveler and petting his head, Lucy said to the dog, it makes me so happy to see you doing so well. She smiled as she walked over to Grace and said, he made himself right at home here with you, Grace. He's become your protector, although he didn't bark at us this time. Grace replied, yes, he's a great little guard dog, but he knows you now. He only barks at strangers. Mary said, he's getting used to us. Lucy looked at her watch and exclaimed, Mary, we need to shove off. It's almost 11 o'clock. I have sitting duty at Expressions in Berkeley. Lunch is still within reach if we leave now. Grace replied, well then, you both had better get going. Nice seeing you. Come back soon. Lucy and Mary hurried off to Louie's Cafe. When they arrived at the restaurant, they took the window seat, facing the sun, and kept their shades on, enjoying the view of the ocean. They ordered two hamburgers and iced tea and sat quietly, staring out the window until they started drifting back to the past. Mary was the first to reminisce. She shared with Lucy 
her memories of the 1966 Beatles concert. August 29, 1966 was the Beatles' last performance. And it was at Candlestick Park. George took me. The tickets were only six fifty each. His mother drove us there, and knowing that the park got terribly cold at night, she gave us blankets to keep us warm. She was correct because it was freezing that night. The fans screaming made it hard to hear the music, and even the Beatles were upset due to the loud noise and poor sound system. Although it was windy and cold, George and I were comfortable under the warm blankets. Even though we couldn't hear the Beatles sing at times, we were happy to be there for their last show. The date is seared in my mind because George admired Ringo's drumming style. He was blown away to see him in person and couldn't stop talking about it for years. I was disappointed, though, because they didn't sing I Want to Hold Your Hand. They only performed songs from the Revolver album. Nonetheless, it was one of the best dates we ever had. Mary brushed away a tear and softly said, George really enjoyed himself that night. And so did I. It was history in the making. Lucy looked at Mary and said, That night must have been special, Mary. I wish Fred and I could have gone. I know how much you miss George. We all miss him. Fred and Bob like catching a wave or two for him every time they surf at Ocean Beach. Smiling, Mary responded, They were the three musketeers, one for all and all for one. Lucy looked at her watch and said, I didn't realize how late it is. I have to get going. You run along. I've got this covered. Thanks, Mary. I'll buy next time. No problem. Ciao. Chapter 15. The day before the class reunion. Lucy found a bunch of memorabilia in her attic. To her surprise, she located the 1967 Peace March film along with her father's movie camera and projector. Thinking it would be meaningful to share the find with Mary and Jane, she brought everything downstairs. She phoned Mary and told her to come on over and check it out. Jane should have arrived over half an hour ago for band practice, but she was running late. Meanwhile, Fred and Bob were jamming with Phil, their drummer, in the garage. They had come up with a long list of songs from the 60s that they were going to play on the night of the reunion. They only had one more day to practice, so the music coming from the garage was nonstop. It made Lucy smile hearing the songs she loved, especially Brown Eyed Girl. She reached into her pocket and took out Fred's shades. She put them on and was instantly transported back in time. She closed her eyes and recalled that in the fall of 1968, there had been a free concert in Golden Gate Park. Bob and the Flames had performed along with other Bay Area bands that day. The Flames had begun their set with Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. While singing, Fred glanced down at Lucy, who was looking up at him. They were young teenagers in love. In their youthful naivety, they believed that love conquered all. There was no place on earth Lucy would have rather been than with Fred right after that performance. When he got off stage, he walked up to her and said, Come on, let's go somewhere quiet. He put his arm around her, and they began walking along a path in the panhandle. When they came to a shady tree, Fred stopped walking and asked Lucy if she would like to sit for a while. They sat down, and taking her hand, he proclaimed, I love you. He kissed her tenderly and held her close. I love you too, Fred. I blew it big time not taking enough units last semester. I've been worried about our future ever since that awful day at the draft board, and now I'm off to fight in a war. I don't want to go, but I have to. I have no other choice. I want to marry you when I return, Lucy. Will you wait for me? There is no need to wait. I'll marry you now, before you leave for boot camp. We'll, re we'll, re we'll, re we'll continue on tomorrow. <laughs>